BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. You're listening to Tuesday's episode of The Archers from BBC Radio 4. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Stop banging. You're going to wake the whole village. Amy, what are you doing here? Chris, sorry, I didn't mean Look, to... Look, it's six in the morning. What the hell are you playing at? I needed to see you. It's important. I thought you were still in Nottingham. I was. I, I came back Yeah, to... I can see that. Um, all right, you better come in. Come on. I, sorry, yeah. What's going on? Why are you here? I'm worried about Alice. Why? What's wrong? I think she might be drinking. No. No, she can't be. She was fine at the weekend when she dropped Martha off. I'd have known her she was drinking again. No, I know, but I saw her last night, and when I left she was in such a state, I'm worried she might have started again. I've been ringing her all night, but she's not answering, and I'm terrified. She's, you know, I, I don't know, done something. Why? What's happened? I told her about us. What? Why would you do that? Because I haven't been able to look her in the eye for weeks. She thought it was her fault that she'd done something wrong. I couldn't keep lying to her. What, and you didn't think to give me a heads up? I didn't plan to tell her. I just... When I saw her, I I had to. What does she say? She was really upset. And you just left her like that? I had no choice. She threw me out. What was I supposed to do? (sighs) I've got to get over there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Do you want me to stay with Martha? Uh, No, no, it's fine. I don't mind. No, I'll take her. If Alice is drinking, then seeing Martha might be the only thing that will get through to her. I know it's early, but I thought I'd take a chance when I saw your lights on. Not stopping you getting ready for work, am I? No, I'm ready. You know me, Susan, like a military operation round here in the mornings. <laughs> I've already done a load of washing and sorted tonight's tea. I've done her ladyship's packed lunch for college and I was just about to take a round of brews up for this lazy lot. Then I'll sit down with one for myself. You got time for a quick one? Oh, yes, go on then, thanks, Tracy. Carrie won't mind if I'm a couple of minutes late. Oh, lucky you. I can't risk being a second late. Still in the doghouse with Oliver, ain't I? Oh, surely not. That was ages ago, your little uh, embarrassment. Oliver isn't one to hold a grudge. I don't know. He's barely said two words to me since. Can't look me in the eye. Well, he'll just be embarrassed, won't he? Must have been a shock catching Jazza in the buff like that. Nah, he's lost his faith in me. I reckon if I put another foot wrong, I'll be getting my P45. He'd be cutting off his nose to spite his face getting rid of you. You're an asset to that place, and Oliver knows it. I hope so. Because if Oliver lets me go, and then Justin sacks Jazzer, both of us will be up the creek without a paddle. Well, let's just hope it doesn't come to that. Yeah. Jazz said Neil and Hannah started work yesterday to come up with a plan. Try and save as many jobs as possible. Yeah, that's right. It's really good of them. I hope it works. Mm, Me too. Tell you what. I wouldn't have coped these last few months without Jazzer's help. First the washer packs in, then our Brad bursts through another pair of trainers. If his feet keep growing at this rate, he'll be in boats by the time he leaves school. Uh, Then Chelsea needs some new kit for her course, and that don't come cheap. Yeah, Neil and me have agreed to tighten our belts in case the worst happens. Mm. Oh, I'm trying to keep my chin up in front of Neil, but between you and me, if Barrow closes, I don't know what we'll do. He won't get another job at his age. Same with Jazzer. Here you go. Thanks. Oh, he's only young compared to Neil. He's got years of work ahead of him. Yeah, but he loves working with them pigs. And he'll be devastated if the unit closes. Alice? Alice? In here. Oh. Hi. What's the matter, Chris? Uh, No, nothing. I just wanted to check you were all right. I was worried. 
so worried that you thought it necessary to bring our sleeping child over before breakfast and let yourself into my house. Yeah, well, I've still got keys. I thought it might be urgent. I thought you might be... What? Drunk? Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, no, that's, that's good. Amy called you then. She was worried about you. Oh, sweet. Alice, listen, I'm really sorry. Right. I never meant for this to happen. Still, it did, didn't it? I know, but... Wait. Not yet. What do you mean? Give Martha to me. Why? Because, Chris, I'm going to take her upstairs and put her in a cot. She shouldn't have to hear any of what you've got to say. Uh, yeah, OK. Oh, I don't know how Alice can do this to us. I really don't. They had it all worked out. Christopher would be the resident parent with Alice having reasonable access. She'd be lucky to get that, if you ask me, after everything she's put them through this past year. I can see why Alice has changed her mind, though. I mean, she is Martha's mum. Oh, and Christopher's her dad. Yeah, of course. But that's why it's so difficult, isn't it? They both want her to live with them. Well, don't be siding with her just because she's fixed your boiler. No, I'm not. Of course I'm not. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, look at the time. I'm doing the dairy soon. Clary will be wondering where I've got to. Thanks, Tracy. It's good to have someone to talk to about it all. I've been that worried. Any time. I don't want to overload Neil, because he's got enough on his plate worrying about Barrow. Mm. Don't think he's slept through in weeks. I wake up in the middle of the night to find him tossing and turning, trying to work out how they can save the pig unit. He's at the end of his tether. Weeks? Sorry? How's he been tossing and turning for weeks? When we only found out about this on Sunday. Did I say weeks? Yes, Susan, you did. How long have you and Neil known about Barrow closing? So? Yeah, so... Uh, I presume you want to give me some kind of explanation, or... Did you just come round to check I wasn't passed out on the floor? Y no, I do. Um, want to explain. I don't know what Amy said, but... Um... Well, I think she covered everything, pretty much. The pair of you just got closer and closer. You tried to fight it, but in the end it was too much and you couldn't help yourselves. Oh, no, that's not... I mean... It wasn't some big thing. It was... It just happened. Oh, I see. I don't know why it happened. It was only once and... Well... Yeah, once and a kiss, yes, no, Amy said. It shouldn't have happened. I hold my hands up. Oh, it's big of you. I don't know what you want me to say. I'm sorry. I was lonely and stressed and sad and confused and... And I messed up. I know that. I regret it badly. It's not... You know, we're not... Me and Amy, it was just a stupid thing that happened. Alice? Yes? Aren't you going to say anything? What do you want me to say? Well, I don't know. It's like you don't even care. Of course I care. The thought of you and Amy together makes me feel sick. Literally physically sick, like I can throw up right now. I'm heartbroken, Chris. Devastated. Is that not the kind of thing you're after? Of course not. So what then? What do you want from me? Oh, please, Tracy, just listen to me. I have listened. I've sat here all morning listening to you <sighs> going on and on and not once did you think to mention, oh, actually, Tracy, me and Neil have known about this for weeks. We just didn't tell you. I wanted to tell you. Oh, well... That's all right then. But Neil had promised Brian, you see, and I was worried that if I said something and it got out, Neil had be for it. His job was at risk. Oh, like jazzers, you mean? Exactly. We're all in the same boat. How are we in the same boat? <gasps> you and Neil are up there on Brian's cruise liner, talking business and swigging champagne, while me and Jazza are trying to keep up on a dodgy pedalo. No, 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 it's not like that at all. Neil's been trying to save everyone's jobs. He's been that stressed, I've never seen him like this. You could have told me. 
I'd have kept it quiet. Uh, what difference would it have made? Jazzer could have started looking for something else. He's lost weeks now. Weeks he could have been searching for another job. And how would that have looked? Him going round asking for work. People would have asked why and he'd have ended up letting the cat out of the bag. No, he wouldn't. Not if you'd asked him not to. Jazzer's loyal, unlike some people round here. I'm loyal? Yeah, when you want to be. Seems like family ties don't mean much to you. Oh, that's not fair. Face it, Susan. You and Neil are in cahoots with Brian, scrabbling to protect management jobs and to hell with the rest of us little people. No! I thought better of you. My own sister. I thought you'd have my back. I have got your back. Yeah, looks like it. Now, if you don't mind, I've got to get to work. Oh, Tracy, please. Go on. Give me my mug back and get out. You know, I'm single. You and me weren't together when it happened. So what? So technically, I haven't done anything wrong. Oh, come on, Chris. Make up your mind. Either you messed up and you regret it, or you did nothing wrong. Which is it? I'm just saying that this wasn't my choice. What? You didn't want to sleep with Amy? No, I, I mean, you're the one that left me, not the other way round. If it was up to me, we'd still be together. Ah, right. So you sleeping with my friend is all my fault. No, but... No! No is right. You did this, Chris, not me. This is your fault and you need to own it. I will own it. I am owning it. I'm just saying that I'm not the only one who messed up. Oh, I was wondering when it would come back to me being an alcoholic. Well, no, not this time, Chris. This one's on you. I know that. I am but... sick of being treated like a terrible person. I'm an alcoholic. I have a disease. That doesn't mean I'm a bad person. You don't need to tell me that. No, I think I do. Because even after everything that's happened, you still don't get it, do you? Don't get what? This is what I was trying to tell you at the mediation sessions. You, you just can't grasp it. When I was unwell, I hurt a lot of people. It was awful for everyone. I know that. But now I'm in recovery. And while, yeah, I'll always be an alcoholic, I'm not drinking. I am sober and I am strong and healthy and capable. And I am done with feeling guilty. I don't want you to feel guilty. No, I think you do. I think it's handy for you to have me as a scapegoat for you to blame every time something goes wrong. What? Alice the drunk, did you hear what she did? Yeah, well, sorry, Chris, I've moved on. I'm not about to fail now, no matter who you get off with. So you might as well stop hanging around waiting for me to fall off the wagon. How can you say that? Oh, Chris, stop whinging. This is total deflection and I won't have it. You said it yourself. You messed up. You slept with Amy. You feel guilty, you wish it never happened, you're only human, yada yada. But admit it, a bit of you came round here this morning hoping to find me in a pool of my own vomit so you could trot back off to the moral high ground and have Martha all to yourself. This has nothing to do with Martha. Isn't it? That's not how it looks to me. And if you don't mind, I'll see what my solicitor thinks about that. What has happened to you? I'll tell you what's happened to me, Chris. I've realised, despite what you and your mother would have everyone believe, that I am a good person and a good parent. My daughter needs me, and I'm going to fight for her.